Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today for our very first episode of Stories of Christmas Joy. I had a brainstorm to put these episodes together because the Lord has been so good to us in this Christmas season. I got a lot of stories of joy last year in response to my devotional, Seeking Joy Through the Gospel of Luke, A Christmas to Calvary Advent Countdown. And a lot of those stories just put tears in my eyes. And I thought that you need to hear these stories too. So they've come from all over the world. And my very first guest today is a dear friend who I actually know in person, like we've actually been able to share hugs with each other. And I met her in 2020 at a speaker's event. And we've had such a great friendship since then. And I know that she has the joy of the Lord in her heart. And she told me that she has a really fun and impactful Christmas story of joy to share with you today. So this is Cheryl Lutz. She is an author and speaker and the founder of Securely Held Ministries. And I'm so grateful that you're here today with me today. Cheryl, say hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having me, Christine. This is fun. Got I yeah. got in the spirit, got my red shirt on and put up my little Charlie Brown Christmas tree behind us. So yeah. Yeah, you did more than I did. I should be decorated for Christmas <laughs> by now as someone who wrote a Christmas devotional, right? But oh, I do have my wrong figure, my joy plaque up there that my aunt yes. made me that goes with me everywhere when I go out and speak mm -hmm. about joy. So I do have that. So thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. And the topic of the day, we are talking about joy and specifically I want to ask the people that are coming on these Facebook lives with me to share a story about Christmas joy. So I'm kind of just going to turn it over to you and let you share the Christmas joy that God, Christmas joy story that God put on your heart that you thought would be good for to share with the wor weary world today. So go ahead. <laughs> yes. Well, it's the most wonderful time of the year when the a kids with the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer <laughs> but what if you're not feeling it in your heart and everyone's telling you be of good cheer because some seasons are hard and I know that that is what Christine I know that's what motivated you to write Seeking Joy it was during 2020 when things were heavy and things were hard and Mm -hmm. friends weren't uh, the what were the there'll be parties for hosting you know parties weren't being hosted it was especially in some parts of the country and, and it was very hard especially those in nursing homes and single single women and or men and so it was it was a, a hard season and mm -hmm. when Christine wrote her book and I started reading the devotions that ended up being put into the devotional book the Christmas song that really pierced her heart, as you've heard her say, it was Oh Holy Night. And for her, it was the, the second verse, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. So it was that hope that, re that helped her realize that in the midst that the world was weary and the world was heavy and it, and it was hard. But she saw that spark of hope in this Christmas song mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit just had her run with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful she did. And then it was the first stanza as I was looking back at that Christmas song, Christmas Carol, that hit me. Because some of you know, I who've followed my ministry, I identity issues, you know, in the past, very, very... Um, strong and didn't even realize that I had these identity issues. I, I knew of that I was loved by Jesus and that he was holding me, but I had a disconnect with the tender love of my heavenly father. Mm. And God began revealing that to me and how these people pleasing and these things in my life were symptoms of a, and the, at the root of that was an identity of not understanding that tender love of the father. And so when I read that, looked again, you know, you hear something for the first time that you've heard forever. <laughs> it just hits you again, you know, oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. 
long lay the world in sin and error pining till mm -hmm. he appeared and the soul felt its worth till he appeared and mm. the soul felt its worth mm. not only was i loved by jesus who died for my sins we are loved by god the father he's the one that sent <laughs> because of his great love he sent his son so if that doesn't give our soul worth, <laughs> I don't know what, what can. And so, yeah. And as I, that just really spoke to me and then I, you know, was going through Christine's book and <laughs> I thought, how can I, we'd had different things in our own family, you know, no family's perfect. And mm -hmm. so the holidays can be hard in different ways. Maybe you lost someone. And that's hard. Or maybe you have a prodigal that's out in the far country and is, isn't with you at the holidays. And, and that's a hard thing. So how can we have that joy that Christine's, you know, telling us about? And it's rooted in hope and in God's word. And, and that's, I love her heart for getting us in the word daily. And that's what this devotional can do. And so I bought copies for all my sisters-in-law, my daughters and <laughs> last year and and we could do it together mm -hmm. and so don't wait you know if you don't have a time that you spend in the word each day if that's not a habit for you yet don't think you have to wait till january you can start now get right? this for all your friends pass it out or your friends your family whoever you want to do it with pass it out at thanksgiving and then you're ready to go right there december 1st so yeah, Christine, tell us how that goes, right. how that works. <laughs> right. Sorry, I'm I just love, kind of running love, away here. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. the idea of surprising your friends and family at Thanksgiving time with an early Christmas present, right? So mm -hmm. that's one thing I like to encourage, like, hey, make sure the Gospel of Luke has 24 chapters and there's 24 days before Christmas in the month of December. So be ready on December 1st to read Luke chapter one. And then I have a little devotional each day, short devotional, and just to accompany it and kind of like draw out some ideas of where the reader can find joy in the gospel of Luke each day. And it's, I, I love that God put on my heart, like the weary world rejoices and that he reminded me through my own journey in spending time in his word every day, which ladies and gentlemen, I have only been doing for a mere, like almost six years now. It took me almost 50 years of my life to finally realize that, that it's truly God's word that is going to sustain us and give us wisdom and give us knowledge. And the best gift that I've gotten out of all of this is a true understanding of joy. And so to be able to speak about joy and write about joy has been like, it's just a huge blessing and a huge gift from the Lord. So, so yes, that's, it's a, it's a tool to get your friends and family in the word. It's a fun way to get them in the word. If you know people that don't necessarily read the word every day, mm -hmm. it is a great opportunity to introduce them to what it looks like to be in God's word every day. And then for those of people that are in the word every day, I really think it reminds us there's some days that we wake up and we forget that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so when God started drawing me into reading his word every day, it was with, I had a mission every day of looking for the joy, the joy of the Lord, even if it, even if the topics in God's word were heavy and hard, you can always find joy in, in that. So that is the purpose of my book. And I'm glad that you were able to share it with friends and family. And then as we know, the book, or as I've mentioned, the book is centered most importantly on the gospel of Luke. So I'm wondering, Cheryl, do you have a particular passage in the gospel of Luke that you like or want to share? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking it's in chapter two of your book that starts with Luke chapter two and uh -huh. an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good noise. Good news. <laughs> the wow. angels are making a right. lot of noise. <laughs> right. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for mm. all the people. Mm. just how that 
again, inspired Christine that it would bring great joy to all the people, the Christmas story that we could, you know, the old Wheaties, well, I'm dating myself, the old Wheaties commercial, taste it again for the first time, you know, and this, the truth of, of the gospel in Luke, you know, read it again for the first time. Mm -hmm. Your joy is waning because things are hard and heavy. And like Christine's saying, it's we, she and I, and some of you, we don't have joy because everything in our life is so perfect. Mm -hmm. It's not, we, we have these things that are happening that are hard, just like the rest of you. And mm -hmm. Christine loves to talk about it. We have another dear friend who lost a five-year-old son many years ago, and they like to talk about how joy and sorrow really can coexist at the same time mm -hmm. when it's rooted in the Lord, the joy and not in our circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that verse, and I loved what you wrote on page 33, um, where it says, be encouraged through the joy we find in God's word. He sent an angel to tell these shepherds, have no fear, joy is here. And I just <laughs> love that. Mm -hmm. when sometimes it's fear that's that's heavy on us at the holidays or any other time and have no fear joy is here I thought I can repeat that to myself and yes that joy. yeah wow. it's like a sticky statement right have no yes. fear joy is here exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Something we can remember and I used to live my life in fear you know before I got into God's word on a regular basis I there's no way that I would want to witness about the Lord. I can remember, I, I was an off and on church attender and I can remember sitting in, in the pew sometimes thinking, don't, don't you dare Lord use me to speak your word. Like that's not something I want to do because I'm an introvert. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's for other people. That's for trained missionaries, people mm -hmm. that have gone to seminary, all that stuff. So I can remember having those conversations with the Lord. And now through this health and wellness journey that I've been on, I can see that this gift of joy that he's given me has empowered me and encouraged me to witness, you know, my jam is joy, but perhaps anybody else listening, like maybe they understood what the true meaning of joy is their entire life. But, and that's great. Praise God for that. But maybe there's some other things that are lacking in their life. Like one of the other fruits of the spirit, like love, peace, faithfulness, mm -hmm. goodness, gentleness, kindness, self-control. That's a big one that I talk about in my health and wellness journey and my health and wellness coaching. Um, so if you, if you think of any of those other fruits of the spirit, Cheryl, is, is there anything like, how do you nourish your joy every day in your own health and wellness with the Lord? Do you have any tidbits to share with the, the audience today for that? I think it's on the spiritual side, the hope, mm -hmm. how closely those, I know that's not necessarily listed in the fruit of the spirit, but yeah. you know how we, it's, it's hard to have joy when we don't have any hope. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's what you were feeling in 2020, the heaviness of people who just, they, they weren't feeling hope. Mm -hmm. And so they, that joy, they were being robbed of joy. And so, mm -hmm. yes, there's always hope because we think of the night that the soul found its worth. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. You know, that's so good. Right. So whatever is happening in our lives, the hard and the heavy, mm -hmm. we get hope in God's word, hope in God's truth, hope in his power to, to save as another mm -hmm. Christmas carol, joy to the world. And it says, mm -hmm. what are the, the words? He make, uh, he comes to make his blessings flow Mm. Far as the curse is found, mm. far as the curse is found. And so mm. it touches everyone and everything. And that's our hope in the midst of the curse of the ugliness, you know, mm -hmm. and that gives us our joy. Yeah. And, and I love the ministry that God has called you to about identifying our worth in Christ. And I love Ephesians too, how Jesus is inviting us to take a seat at his table. I mean, mm. we are welcome there. And that's like a very key part of your message. So before we end today, why don't you tell anybody watching how they can get in touch with you and just a little bit about your ministry and what it offers so that people know how to reach you too. So go ahead and share about that. Yeah. Thanks, Christine. And your yeah. upcoming book. 
which yeah. I happen to have been blessed to be a part of. I got to share a little story in there. So I'm super excited yes. about your book. So tell us about that too. Very powerful story that you shared. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going to finish <laughs> it so we can get it published. <laughs> yeah, right. So yes. The, the working title is Securely Held, which is the name of my ministry with the subtitle, Finding Significance and Security in the Shelter of God's Embrace. Mm. And it's based on Deuteronomy 33, 12, when Moses is blessing the 12 tribes of Israel and about Benjamin, he said, let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him mm. for he shields him all day long. That's so good. The one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. Mm. So when we start understanding who we are as beloved of God, the father, it's hard to rest. It's hard to have security when you don't feel safe, mm -hmm. but we are safe in him. He's our shield. His, we're safe in his love and we can rest in the heavenly father mm. as well as the son. And so, yeah, that's what I talk about in my blog and on my website and what the book will help with those things. I know I, I didn't realize that I had an identity issue <laughs> for many years. I'm teaching the Bible, teaching everybody else about their, who they are in Christ. I'm a women's ministry director, pastor's wife. And I did not know that I had that disconnect Ooh. and boy, what a restoration of joy and peace and all the things. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to share that healing with others. So yeah, you can find That's me on my it. website at CherylLutz.com. Awesome. And you're a, a, a author getting ready to publish your yes. first book and you're a speaker yes. and you also very, share very inspirational messages on social media. So I, I hope that everybody Find Cheryl at CherylLutz.com. You can find all her links there and join her newsletter so you can stay up to date on her book as well, thank too. You. Thank you. All right, Cheryl, thank you for singing us in when you... When that you was pretty bad. Up. Everybody, I hope, I, hope, I hope people didn't jump off right there. You know? <laughs> no, no. I appreciate you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing the good news of great joy uh, to a weary world. And friend, if you are fearing, feeling weary, or even if you're just full of joy right now too, I, I invite you to join us on the devotional journey this December, beginning December 1, in Seeking Joy Through the Gospel of Luke. I have ways to shop or at christinetrimp.com forward slash joy. I have copies to sign and ship, and also it's available wherever books are sold. So, and also, Either one of us, Cheryl or myself, are available for speaking engagements. She is in Georgia. I am in Michigan, but we are both willing to travel, I believe, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? I'm like a dog. Somebody open the car door and I will jump in. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to travel too. And I'm looking forward yeah. to sharing more joy through this Christmas season and beyond. The gift of joy is for, uh, one thing I always like to remind people too, is that I find people are more receptive to the good news of great joy during the Christmas season. So please take advantage of that yes. and be prepared to share the good news of great joy. But then it also, you know, it can impact the world beyond the Christmas season, of course, as well, too. So thank you for joining us today. Leave a comment below so that we know you were here and we will come back around and respond to your comments. And we appreciate you being here today and watching us and hearing stories of Christmas joy. Until next time. All right. Bye-bye. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye for now, right? <laughs>